Welcome in Tilman's Flodiger's room, here at Giants of the Earth Heritage Center. I'm Mons Flodiger. I was born on May 7, 1826, on the Flodiger farm in Nor Ardal, Valdres, Opland, Norway. My parents were Henrik Arneson Flodiger and Inger Mann's daughter Rudlang. My father Henrik was born in 1781 and Inger was born in 1785. My father was a farmer and a metal worker. I was one of six children. One of my brothers, Ola, was born on the 24th of August, 1832, and he became a very famous sculptor who died in 1871, and he was honored by being buried in Rome. We corresponded often by letter up until his death. A bust of Ola overlooks the Valdres Valley in Norway. In my early life in Norway, I was also interested in art and painted, which was my principal employment. I lived for a time in Christiania. I moved to Denmark and Germany before deciding to come to America in 1857. I arrived in America when I was 31 years old and came to Manitowoc, Wisconsin to work for the Smalley Manufacturing Company as a model maker and a wood turner. In 1859, I traveled west to settle in Spring Grove. When I first arrived in America, Franklin Pierce was president of the United States, and by the time I moved to Spring Grove, James Buchanan was president. The settlement of Spring Grove began in 1852, when people from Sigdal, Stavanger, and Hollingdal began settling west of what is now the present city limits. Other settlers, like Englishman James Smith, gave Spring Grove its name, and he started the first post office here. I purchased 40 acres of land from Peter Halver Torgenrud, on which the business district of Spring Grove was built. In 1860, I opened a mercantile establishment in a little log house which was located where the present-day Hera Fair is located. This log house was the first building built on the south side of Main Street. The building belonged to Mr. William Fleming, who ran a tavern and rooming house there. One night, so many people uh, were looking for a place to sleep that Fleming decided to add a makeshift bedroom annex to the building. He piled pumpkins in the corners to hold up a larger roof and also to serve as anchors for the hastily gathered rough siding. Fleming capitalized on the incident to give his short-lived business its name, the Pumpkin Tavern. Later, Fleming was reported to be the first adult to die in the new town of Spring Grove. Ours was not the only business in Spring Grove. Here are a few more. The general store of William Hinckley was also located on the south side of the Highway 44. This building was farther west of town. Around 1855, William Hinckley purchased James Smith's entire stock of goods and erected a store. Mr. Hinckley was also a dealer of wines and liquor. In 1862, I was appointed deputy postmaster and kept the post office in my store for about a year. Joseph Prentice succeeded me as postmaster and moved the post office to the Hinckley building, which he operated as a hotel. Prentice later moved to La Crosse, and William Hinckley sold his store to Tiemann Gilbertson. Tiemann kept a public house for several years, and then built in 1879 a large brick hotel which stood on what is now the Spring Grove Public School playground. After Tiemann built his brick hotel, he used the Hinckley building as a storeroom and a woodworking shop. Business in Spring Grove expanded so rapidly that a few years later I built my first frame structure located in the middle of what is now Division and Main Street. I later built an addition onto this building and it became the largest mercantile establishment in Houston County. While business was important to me, so was my family. I married my lovely Joran Petter's daughter Lohman on the 7th of May 1863. She was born November 2nd, 1845 in Vestri Slidra, Valdres, Norway. 
Her parents were Peter Janssen Lohmann and Joran Ohl's daughter, Risti. Peter and Joran were married in 1845 in Valdres, and they emigrated to the United States in May of 1851, arriving in New York City. By the 1860 census, they were living in Spring Grove. They were both buried in the old cemetery north of Trinity Church. They had six children, of which Joran was one. After her mother's death, Peter married Marie Arndt's daughter, and they had four more children. Our family consisted of our oldest son, Henry, born in 1865. He married Caroline Hendrickson, daughter of Nels Hendrickson and Birgit Ohl's daughter, Sagadalen. Nels Hendrickson was another early businessman in Spring Grove and built the brick building where the Sterling Drug is located today. He also built this brick house on 2nd Avenue Southeast, where Gary and Jan Soley live today. Henry and Caroline had five children. They were Edith, who married Gilbert Oseth. When Edith was young, she had a hat shop in my store, where she made and designed hats for the ladies of Spring Grove. They had one daughter, Eleanor, who married Robert Foskett. Berta, who married Charles W. Muir. She was a teacher in Minnesota and Colorado, and they lived in the Blackhammer Township for seven years, but had no children. Natalia never married. She taught in Minneapolis for 25 years before retiring to Spring Grove. Harold Clarence was born in 1895 and died in 1899 and is not in this picture. Maurice married Blanche Avis Eckern. She was born in Chicago in 1895 to Olaf Olson Eckern and Maria Erickson. Maurice and Blanche were married in 1924. Maurice died in 1968 and Blanche in 1990. They had two children, Betty May, who married Virgil Thompson. Betty and Virgil had four children, Robert, Barbara, John, and James. And after Virgil's death, Betty married Fred Renus. Louise Carolyn, who married Leland Sundet, and they have Mary Lou, David Lee, Scott Allen, and Carol Louise. After working for a while as a clerk in the Flatiger store, Maurice decided in April of 1918 to enlist in the United States Aviation Service later transferring to the motor field artil artillery. Our second child, Peter Flattiger, was born in 1867. He never married, and he was the, in partnership, however, with his brother, and so the firm was later known as the Flattiger Brothers. The business was started by my son Henry here in 1892 in the second frame building that I built on the corner of what is now Main and Division Streets. Our original store was managed by Henry alone until I passed away, when Peter became his partner. And then they made improvements in the business to expand it to include ladies and misses ready to wear clothing, and also a millinery. Our first daughter, Inga, was born in 1873. She never married and died of a heart attack that she suffered on 1945 when a tornado hit Spring Grove. She was a charter member of the Church's Dorcas Society. Our third son, Martin, was born in 1880. He was very interested in baseball, which was his favorite sport. He was also interested in music and was a member of both the Spring Grove and Lanesboro bands. He married Clara Goldberg, and they had one daughter, Margaret. He worked in my store and later was in partnership with his brother, Peter. And in 1909, he and his wife moved to Lanesboro, Minnesota, where he entered into a business partnership with Julius Olson and Albert Langley. He later moved to Solway, Minnesota, and ran a general store there. Arnold was our youngest son. He was born in 1886. As a child, he was stricken with infantile paralysis, which left him in a condition incapacitating him from any physical labor. He was, however, sound in mind and was a diligent student of history, as well as a keen observer of current social and political trends. 
He lived many years with his sister Inga. He was in good health until two weeks before he was taken to the hospital in Rochester, where he passed away in 1937. This was my family. Of course, I lived in Spring Grove through some very interesting historic years. I hadn't been in Spring Grove too long when the Civil War began. Civil War hostilities began the 12th of April, 1861, when the Confederate forces fired on Fort Sumner, a key fort held by the Union troops in South Carolina. The Civil War concluded when the Confederate Army was defeated, leading to Lee's surrender to Grant at Appomattox Courthouse on April 9, 1865. Many men from this area lost their lives in the Civil War, never to return. The Indian conflict shared the Civil War years. It began on August 17, 1862, along the Minnesota River in the southwest part of Minnesota. It ended with a mass execution of 38 Dakota men on December 26, 1862 in Mankato, Minnesota. Several men from Spring Grove and the vicinity took part in this conflict, but we know of no casualties for these soldiers. A major economic development for Spring Grove occurred with the coming of the railroad. Its construction began in 1879. Through my efforts, its arrival determined the location of the current business district. Prior to 1859, the town was strung out over a half a mile both east and west of the territorial road. With the coming of the railroad, I platted my land and sold lots and persuaded the railroad company to abandon its original plan to build a station in Smith's Grove on the east edge of town and to put a quarter mile, it a quarter mile further west instead. Smith's Grove was eventually abandoned, and as a result, I became known as the father of Spring Grove. Of course, there were other institutions here in Spring Grove. In 1857, just two years before I arrived, the Norwegian Evangelical Lutheran Church of Norwegian Ridge entered into a parish partnership with the Big Canoe Congregation just to the south for the purpose of calling a pastor. Norwegian Ridge sent a delegate to the Synod meeting held at Koshkonong, Wisconsin to present our need for a pastor. They agreed that the resident pastor be called. The Church Council of the Norwegian Synod sent a letter of call to candidate of theology Fritz Christensen Clausen in Norway. He accepted and performed his first service at the parsonage in Spring Grove on November 29, 1857. The year after my arrival, construction began on the Stone Church, and on the 27th of September, 1862, a meeting of the congregation was held in the new building. But the church was not totally complete until 1868, probably due to the Indian and Civil Wars. The church was dedicated on November 4, 1868. Pastor Clausen died in 1870, and on September 28, 1871, Rev. S. S. Requi was installed as our new pastor. It was Pastor Requi who conducted my funeral in 1905. By 1870, the Stone Church could not hold the crowds that gathered on festive occasions. Discussions for a new building began and in 1875, a building committee was selected. The new church was of Gothic design and built in the conventional cross church style. The new church was dedicated July 11, 1877. Unfortunately, on April 3, 1893, it was destroyed by fire, and the congregation took immediate steps to restore it. The new church had a lower steeple and less seating capacity as the side galleries were left out of the design. The new church was dedicated on December 7, 1893, the same year that it had burned. In 1886, I built a home on Main Street, where Soli Services is located today, where I spent the rest of my life and where my wife and three sons and daughter lived for quite a while after my death. In 1881, I built a single-story brick building on Main Street where the antique store A Gift to Gab is located. 
This store had a full basement, and some years ago the outside was remodeled to its present look. I worked in this store until three days before my death in 1905. As I mentioned before, at the time, my son Henry was operating the second frame clothing store across the street. Since before the turn of the century, the Flodiger store operated under the sign of the lion because of an English-made statue of a lion that sat in front of the store. It was presented to me by my distant cousin, Mons Anderson, who was called the Merchant Prince of La Crosse. Mons Anderson manufactured the Lion brand of clothing. Over the years, most of the children in Spring Grove have at one time or another sat on this lion. A few years ago, this lion was presented by my descendants to the children of the community of Spring Grove, and it has been placed in a permanent base in Viking Memorial Park for future generations to enjoy. My son Henry was very interested in baseball, and sponsored the Spring Grove team for a number of years. Henry was also instrumental in starting the first Spring Grove homecoming. Starting in 1907, our Spring Grove homecoming has been held in the calendar years ending in seven ever since. Our next homecoming will be in 2017. This is the fan souvenir that was given out at the first homecoming. Here is the souvenir name tag given. We've had many distinguished guests visiting our house over the years, and one of them was Björnstener Björnson. During the years of 1880 to 1881, he visited towns from Chicago, Illinois, all across the Middle West to Fargo, North Dakota. On the 11th of March, 1881, he gave a lecture in La Crosse, Wisconsin, and then was brought by sleigh to Spring Grove, where on the evening of March 12th, he gave a free talk on the prophets, and the next morning a talk for pay on politics. He stayed overnight at our house and Joran fixed him a scrumptious meal. After he sat down at the table, he asked if she had some cream and bread, evidently his favorite food. On the 14th, our sons took him by sleigh to Decorah, Iowa, and on the way they saw a skunk. He asked them to stop the sleigh, as he had never seen a piss cat, as they would say in Norwegian. I have also a sculpted bust in the park. On the 15th of May, 2004, several hundred people gathered to dedicate it. Greg Wenis, local radio personality and Norwegian descendant, welcomed the crowd. Poet and Spring Grove native Joseph Langland read my biography. He mentioned that the Flatiger business had remained in my family for 107 years before it was purchased by the Robert and Marilyn Hillmans in 1967. Today, it is located where Ivy Grove Restaurant is. Flatiger descendants Lee and Louise Sundet introduced the Flatiger relatives who were in attendance, and Governor Al Kui spoke. Louise Sundet unveiled the bust and the ceremony closed with Craig Bershgard presenting Mayor Pearl Holland with a bronze plaque that commemorated this day. It was quite a day. Well, I just can't quite remember what else to tell you. Of course, it is unusual for a Norwegian to talk even this much about himself, so I guess I'll close with this. I hope that you've learned a little bit about the early years of Spring Grove and will help this fine organization of Giants of the Earth Heritage Center to preserve and tell about the other founding fathers of Norwegian Ridge, Minnesota. Please take time to read the other materials in my room, and if you have any questions, make sure to speak to one of our fine members of the Ballard House staff. Manga talk to my Flatiger family and to Georgia Rosendahl and the other members of Giants of the Earth Heritage Center for putting this together. And have a good day.